to the service. We, we have been in the presence of God. We are, are in the presence of God and we just want to usher you right along in with us. And so friends, you are now a part of the ministry here at Encouragement Ministries. So let's just go ahead and enter into worship. Enter into prayer. Let us just enter into the atmosphere of God. I want you right now just to begin to cleanse your minds. Begin to just cleanse yourself of all things that have happened today. I want you to cleanse your mind of all things that are bothering you. All things that are coming against you. Right now I just want you to clear your minds and begin to focus on the Lord your God. Once you focus on him, once you've cleared your mind, just begin to worship him. We have come into this place, we have gathered in our homes, in our cars, wherever you may be, we have come together with the one specific goal of worshiping the name of God, of experiencing God in a new way. And so right now, just prepare yourself and set your mind on God and just begin to cry out unto Him. Even now, begin to cry out to Him and just tell Him. Tell Him how you thank Him for how He brought you out of every situation. Tell Him how much you love Him because He cared for you. He spared you. He, he brought you through. Hallelujah. to focus on the Lord right now just begin to just even in your own home in your wherever you are if you're driving then 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 you just pull to the side of the road or wait till you get where you are and begin to lift your hands begin to magnify the Lord your God with the fruit of your lips begin to magnify him if you must clap your hands then begin to clap your hands but right now, just begin to magnify the name of the Lord. Begin to lift up the name of the Lord. Begin to extol the name of the Lord. Make Him great right now. Hallelujah. We are in worship. We're in worship. Hallelujah. personal worship unto him. Begin to have your personal worship with the Lord and begin to just let him know your, your, your worship may not come out in the form of singing. It may come in the form of you just talking and saying, Lord, I worship and I adore you. But there is a song within my spirit that is rising up. 
want to sing my song before the Lord. I just want to let the Lord know. Hallelujah. I adore you. this ministry we want you to feel free to just worship God we want you to feel free to praise God and, and and I know some of you are listening to the song as I sing it and you're saying well that doesn't quite flow it doesn't quite make sense but friends what I want you to know and understand is the worship in your heart may not always make sense to other people it may not always flow in the traditional sense to other people but God is calling a worshiper in you the worshiper that is within you God is calling calling you out right now and the spirit of God is saying he wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth and what he's simply saying is right now whatever it is that is within your heart it may be con unconventional it may be untraditional it may be something new it may be something unheard of but right now the spirit of God is saying release your worship unto me release your praise unto me because he lives within your worship. He lives within your praise. He lives within you. And he is waiting to be released. He is waiting to be let out. When you open up your mouth and you begin to bless the name of God and let out a praise unto God, no matter how it sounds, how it comes out, God is pleased. God is magnified. God is glorified. And therein, he begins to rain down blessings upon you. I dare you right now, whatever struggle you have been going through, whatever hell you have been dealing with, I dare you to get a praise on your heart right now and let it flow out of your lips, out of your mouth, and watch how God will turn that thing around. Watch how God will break up fallow ground. Watch how God will do what only God can do. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God. Lord, we worship and adore you. God, we place no one before you. For you are Lord. Our King, you are King of everything. Everything. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we glorify you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We magnify you in this place, oh God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you, oh God. Oh, yes, God. Bless your name. We worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we adore you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. We worship. Hallelujah. Place, oh God, we magnify you, oh God. Lord, we, live. we 
make you greater than every problem, God. We make you greater than every situation, greater than every circumstance, oh God. We declare right now that the devil has no victory or place here, and we command him to leave. And God, we take all place that we gave to the devil, and we surrender it unto you. So we lift up our hands as a sign of submission, Father God. We lift up our hands as a sign of surrender unto you, God, saying, Lord, have your way, saying, Lord, you be glorified, Father God, take the mess that I have created, the thing that I have messed up and, 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 and mulched up and made a mess of, God, and you take it and mold it and make it, Father God, into what you would have it to be. Hallelujah, Jesus. We magnify you. Ooh. For someone, God just lifted a weight off of you. He just lifted a burden right off of you. Because you have decided to give him your worship. You have decided to give him your praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. and worship but it's a necessary way hallelujah glory to your name God the Lord is pleased with your worship he's pleased with your praise
your word be made plain. Let it be made simple, Father God. Let it be made clear before us, O oh God. Unlock biblical truths, O oh God. Biblical principles, Father God. Biblical things that have been hidden, Father God, for years. Father God, for generations, for decades, Father God, for millennia even. Father God, we pray now, O oh God, that you would unlock secrets of heaven now, O oh God. And speak to our hearts and our minds, our spirits. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Friends, we bless the Lord for just the freedom of ministry and being able to flow and how God allows us to flow, how he calls us to flow. It was not initially planned that I would do praise and worship. I, you know, we were initially going to, to cut to Kristen and, and have her uh, worshiping and singing. And just when we started, I just felt the push, the prompt to just go ahead and go straight into worship. There was something in there that somebody received. You received a fresh wind, a fresh wind, a fresh anointing, a rejuvenation of sorts. Because you found your voice, you found a way to unlock what's been hiding inside of you, what you've been feeling inside of you. And now that you found a way to release that and to unlock that. You hold on to that feeling of releasing and unlocking and you don't stop. Don't let it go. Keep releasing your worship. Keep unlocking more worship. It's your unique brand of worship. And the Lord desires to hear your unique brand of worship. If the Lord did not believe in unique brands of worship, then we would not have all these different types of gospel artists and gospel singers that we have now. If God did not believe in uniqueness in worship, then we would not have the ministry gift of Kristen who sings songs from heaven every Sunday, week after week for us. Friends, I want you to know God desires to hear your worship. However unique, however different, he desires your worship. So you cannot afford to hold back in it any longer. Now that you have found your voice, found your place of worship, you cannot afford to just let go and just sit on it. But that praise, that worship that you have found will unlock so many doors spiritually in your life it will help you to release so many things that you've held locked in anger that you've held locked in disappointment shame in yourself that you've held locked in so friends don't forget your voice don't forget to find your place of worship for the word of God we're going to make ready now for the word of God and as we make ready for the word of God we're going to go to John chapter 3 we're going to start at verse number 1 it's John chapter 3 verse number 1 and it says this when you get there in John chapter 3, verse number 1, it says, There was a man from the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. <clears throat> this man came to him, him being Jesus, at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher. For no one could perform these signs you do unless God were with him. 
And so he says here, he says, um, verse number three, Jesus replied, I assure you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But how can anyone be born again or be born when he is old, Nicodemus asked him. Can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born of flesh is flesh. Whatever is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you that you must be born again. The wind blows where it pleases, and you hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit and then I want to finally read verse 9 and 10 and then we'll go into the word of our, or into our message it says here how can these things be asked Nicodemus are you a teacher of Israel of Israel and don't know these things Jesus replied and we're gonna stop right there are you a teacher of Israel and don't know these things? Jesus replied. Friends, our message for today, the title of this service, the title of this message is, Lord, I'm tired of going to church. Or you could simply say, Lord, I'm tired of church. Now, friends, you know, when you look at uh, this passage of Scripture and you look at Nicodemus, one of the things that is uh, so key about Nicodemus and that is so, so, so profound about this, even that we see in verse number 10, as we look at number 10, Jesus asks Nicodemus, he says, uh, are you not a teacher? Are you not a teacher, he says? And, and, you know, the thing is, is Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was one of the Jewish rulers, which means that Nicodemus knew the Bible. He knew the scrolls. He knew all of these things. And he even uh, uh, had access because, you see, when he would go to church, or when he would when he would go to the synagogue, if you had an offering that would to, you wanted to be if offered up, Nicodemus was right there, and Nicodemus could be one who would go into the presence of God and offer up this sacrifice for you. He was one of the ones who could go to God on your behalf. But here it is in in in, Nick, in John chapter three. I mean, yes, in John chapter three, we find that Nicodemus comes to Jesus and then he acknowledges that he knows exactly who Jesus is. Now you say, well, why is this uh, so puzzling? Why is this uh, so strange? Because you see, there are so many of us who find ourselves in the place of Nicodemus. So many of us have, have been a part of religion all our lives, or we've been a part of, of rituals all our lives. Uh, even in my own life, I grew up Baptist, and I've always been, uh, or mostly always been a part of a Baptist church. And so I know that when I go to church, or when I would go to church as a child, First we would do this, then we would do that, then they would have altar call, then they would uh, uh, do this, then they would do that, then we would have uh, choir sing, sermon, uh, um, invitation to Christian discipleship, benediction. I knew that was the order. I knew what to expect every Sunday. And every Sunday I would go and they would not disappoint me. It would happen the same way every Sunday. Maybe different people standing in different positions, but the ritual was still the same. 
And then one day I began to get like Nicodemus and I came to Jesus and I said, God, I need something more. I need to know you more. I want a better experience with you. I don't want to just go to church. I don't just want to have religion. I don't want to just uh, be stuck in a cycle going around over and over. But I want to experience you and know you. And so I found myself in a place like Nicodemus. And many of you have been going to church. You go to church Sunday after Sunday. You go to church week in and week out. But then you find yourself like Nicodemus where after church ends, you're still hungry for more. You find yourself in a place where after the church service is over, they've given the benediction and all of that has been said, the Bibles have been closed. You still have not yet experienced Jesus. You still have not yet had a real encounter with the Lord. And so you find yourself in a place where you say, let me go to my computer. Let me look on my phone and see if there is a service that has been uploaded. If there is a service that has been unlocked, because I know within this service, I am going to encounter the Lord within this service. I am going to be fed by God within this service. My needs will be met spiritually. The need that I have, the hunger that I have will be filled. And right now Jesus is saying there is nothing wrong with coming at the night hour. There is nothing wrong with, uh, you see some of you, the Lord showed me something. He says some of you, you know, you, you, you feel kind of bad because you're, 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 you're in your church, you're at your church, you're doing your thing and all of this kind of stuff and you sit there and you leave and you go home and when you're there you may not lift up your hands while you're at church, you may not sing a song while you're at church, you may just sit there in church and, 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 and just try and receive and sometimes you may even try Try and plug in. You may try and worship and you may try and lift your hands and you may not even still get anything then. You may not feel anything. And then you can't wait to leave church and come home so that you can join in to encouragement ministries and, and, and maybe feel the anointing of God and feel the power of God in a different way, in a new way. And God is saying there is nothing wrong with coming to him at night. There is nothing wrong with having a Nicodemus experience where, where you see, you come to Jesus because you, you don't want your pastor to know that you're watching this service because you don't want your pastor to know that you're being fed by somebody else. See, there are some people who watch our services. And, 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 and as they're watching our services, you know, they, 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 they can't like the service. They can't share the service because they are enshackled uh, uh, to, to the, the, the ideas of a man. And their pastor, if he knew they were watching somebody else faithfully and being fed by them faithfully and being a part of their ministry and sharing their videos and doing this. But yet they won't even go out with the church and witness. They won't won't do anything in the church. I understand understand that some of you are tired of the religion or tired of the situation that's in your church and so you come and you watch these services and, and, and you find a release, you find fulfillment within these services and the Spirit of God is simply saying that's all fine and well, that's okay. You can receive of the Lord now within this service. You can receive of the Lord even now. And it's quite all right. It's quite okay for you to receive from God. And it's quite okay for you to be a part of this service. Because what God simply understands is that He desires your worship. And so if He desires your worship, He desires is that the Spirit of God is saying it's okay to seek Him at night. And not only is the Spirit of God saying through Nicodemus that it's okay to seek him at night, but what the Spirit of God is saying also, you see, see, there are some of us who, who yes, our pastor and other people are watching, and so we can't like the videos, we can't share the videos, but what God is also saying is this, God is saying, come unto me, 
all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And here within this ministry, you have found a place of rest. And God is saying, if this is the place where you find rest, if this is the place where you find peace, if this is the place where you find fulfillment, then continue seeking me at night. Continue seeking me. Continue to watch the videos. You see, somebody says, well, James, why are you preaching this sermon? Why are you, are you saying all of these things? But a reason why, I want you to understand the reason why, is because there are some people out there who have been watching the services, who has been a part of the church, who have been, been uh, partaking of the bread of this service. And while they're partaking in the bread of this service, they're feeling guilty because they went to church at their own church this past Sunday and they did not feel anything like this. They did not get anything like this and they wish that maybe this setting was available in their own church, that this setting was available in their own city because if it was, they would go there, they would be there, they would be a part of it and they've been feeling guilty about this. But the Spirit of God has come today to set you free. God is saying right now in this moment, you no longer have to feel guilty. There is no condemnation unto you. If you have been a part of our services, if you have been watching our services and you feel guilty for one reason or the other, an obligation or duty to the church that you are at, the Spirit of God today wants to release you from that and let you know that it is okay to receive the word in a different location. It is okay to receive the word in an unconventional away because in this season the traditionalism will not work in this season God is calling a person just like you who is hungry for the word to come seeking him even in the midnight hour to come seeking him even in the dark times, even in the dark places where nobody knows you're watching, where nobody knows that you're viewing these videos and God is saying that it's okay it's okay to be a part of these services. It's okay to tune in. People may not like it. People may not, may not applaud it. People may not support you anymore. They may look at you crazy if they find out. And it's okay for you to come in the dark. The Lord has no problems with you receiving the word. He has no problem with you receiving the word here but still going to a church somewhere else because see I'm not trying to pull you out of your own church but I'm trying to pull you into a deeper relationship with God I'm not here to try and make you join this church and make you become an encouragement ministries member even though I claim each and every one of you but I am not trying to pull you out of your church I simply want to pull you closer to God and so friends I want you to know that the Spirit of God is saying, it's okay to seek me at night. That's what was going on here with Nicodemus. You see, Nicodemus was afraid of what his friends would say, afraid of what his, his relations might say, what his people might say if they knew that he was coming to Jesus. Because you see, they did not like this man, Jesus. They did not like Jesus, although secretly some of them applauded Jesus. They knew exactly who Jesus was. And see, that's the thing I want you to know, is people know exactly who I am. They know exactly who God is. They know exactly where the Spirit of God is. And the problem is, is they don't want you to tune in because they know that if you begin to tune in, that you'll begin to see things in a different light and you may start to pull away and you're one of their faithful members. And so I don't want to pull you from them. But what happens here is you look at it. It says here, he said, Rabbi, we know, this is in verse number two, that you have come from God. Oh my God. I want you to know and I want you to understand, people knew who Jesus was. Even the Pharisees, as much as they hated him, they hated him because they knew. They hated him because they understood. And even in your life, you see, you can't do everything that you want to do publicly because there are some people who are hating on you. There are some people who hate on your anointing because they know and they understand that you come from God. And the reason why they know and they understand that you come from God is because, you see, they see every time you're on the committee to do something, 
something. It's the best that it's ever been. Every time you're on a committee or you're, you're a part of the program to do something, that part of the program becomes the best part of the program, the best part of the service. And so they begin to understand that there is an anointing that operates upon your life, that you have a calling from God. And as they begin to understand these things, then they begin to hate on you. And they, they begin to say, well, I, we don't necessarily want you to be a part of this. Or we don't necessarily want you to do that. But friends, what I want you to know and what I want you to understand is they know who you are. And I know it may be hard. It may be challenging. And sometimes you may feel like, you may think that, 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 that these people are, are out against you. But just know Secretly, they love you. Secretly, they are applauding you. Secretly, they may come to you in the midnight hour. See, there's, there's a couple of dynamics at work within this story. When we begin to look at this story in our own modern day situations, there are some of you who find yourself, you know, where, where people are coming to you and they're saying, what do I need to do to have the type of relationship that you have? What do I have to do in order to, 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 to be, have, be as prosperous as you are, to, to do all the things that you're doing, to, to be a, uh, in, in all the stuff that you're in and all of this, to have what you have? What must I do? And, and you're, you, you're, you're feeling like Jesus because you're telling them what they need to do, and it seems like they're still not getting it. And, and Jesus was constantly breaking it down and constantly telling Nicodemus in different ways. And then even when we get to verse Number 10, finally, Jesus was like, look, man, aren't you a teacher? Aren't you? Aren't you supposed to know these things? And see, some of you have had even your own pastor try and get you to be a part of things and, 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 and try and understand why every time you touch a situation, every time you're in something, it flows so well. It stays together for so long. But when you begin to back off of it, when you begin to remove your hands off of it, why does it fall apart? And he's beginning to come to you and say, well, what is it about you? What is it that you're doing? Can you train some other people? Can you teach some other people? how to do what you're doing because I need people like you and you've been trying to tell them well simply the reason why it's happening is because of favor on my life it's happening because I trust God it's happening because I sow into the kingdom it's happening because of this and because of that and you have found yourself like Jesus after repeating it over and over telling people that you have a relationship with the father they're still stuck in their religion and they're wondering why they're not going anywhere, why things aren't happening for them, why things aren't moving in their life. Jesus, Jesus. Friends, I want you to know and I want you to understand that if you find yourself in this situation, if you find yourself in this place, I want you to know that you have to stay exactly where you Jesus. are. God is calling you to stay where you are, to be Jesus. the beacon Jesus. of light. Jesus. They may come to you in the midnight hour. They could, may come to you just, just at, at that moment. They may come to you and try and figure out what it is you're doing. God says he called you to be light yes. in darkness. So he wants you to stay right where you are and begin to show them. Begin to show them the way. You see, when Nicodemus didn't understand it, Jesus began to break it down even further. He began to walk with Nicodemus a little bit further, talk with Nicodemus a little bit longer. And he said, look, in John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This is the same to his, his this is all a part of the talk he had with Nicodemus. And he began to break it down into simple terms. And so what Jesus is saying is if you find yourself in a position where you have a bunch of Nicodemuses around you trying to hear from you, trying to, to understand why you have the favor that you have on your life, then Jesus says he wants you to go a little bit further. Somebody out there has found themselves in a place and they've been asking God, Lord, how long are you going to have me here? Lord, how long are you going to have me with these people? Jesus. How long will I have to deal with these things? Oh, God. And God is saying, I want you to go just a little bit further. It's not time yet. It's not time to give up on them yet. It's not time to walk away just yet. Friends, I want to encourage you. Oh, God, hallelujah. Just to walk a little bit further. 
begin to teach them even a little bit further, begin to show them all the more what God is saying, begin to show them how you have what you have. I know you've been telling them it's because of the God in me, but begin to really get them, try and get them to understand through your walk, begin to get them to understand through your talk, even if you have to take time to break it down in kiddie terms. Just as Jesus did with Nicodemus, mm -hmm. then friends, do as God has called you to do. Friends, I want you to know and understand that there are so many, so many of us who have been in situations and places where, where we were afraid to, 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 to let our pastor know that we weren't receiving of the Lord anymore from, from under him. And, and we, we feel as though we've kind of outgrown and we, we've been afraid to be in a position where we tell our pastor, look, I need something more. I need to go deeper. Jeez. Friends, I hear the Spirit of God saying, even now, don't be afraid to step out, talk to your pastor, and tell your pastor, look, I need more. I need you to go deeper. I need you to, to come. And, and, and you know, because sometimes I, I hear the Lord saying, I don't know who this is for, but I hear the Lord saying sometimes preachers are thinking that they are going deep. They're thinking that they're doing good because they, you see, in, in school, a teacher knows how deep she needs to teach by how the class does on the test. But when you come into church, there is no test to see, okay, this is where my members are, so I need to preach on this level. This is where my members are, so I need to preach on this level. And unless you go to your pastor, he will keep preaching on this level, and he'll never elevate to a higher level. And what God is saying for the person who is out there, who if this is your situation, you've been uh, sitting under somebody, you've not been getting fed, and you're hungry, the Lord is saying, give your pastor uh, a report, letting him know, look, this is where I am, this is where you've been preaching, I need you to bring it up for me. And you may find that your pastor, like so many other pastors, has been teaching and preaching on a level where they first started and they never elevated any higher because they did not know how to get higher or because they did not know if the people who they had were prepared to go higher. Friends, I don't know who that was for, what that came to me for, but friends, I want you to know that it's okay to go and talk to your pastor and tell your pastor, listen, I need you to bring it up for me because I'm not receiving from you for years. I sat in a place and, and I've sat under people where I was just going to church and was not receiving of the Lord. There was so long within my life, even within my ministry, where I sat somewhere, where I was somewhere, where simply I was just going to church and all the stuff I was hearing was good stuff. It was relevant stuff, but because of where I was, I needed more. And even my wife can attest to the fact that there were times in her life where she would go to church every Sunday and church would be good and the preacher would yes, preach a word and, and, and it just wasn't quite to the level so we would go to another church at night and in the come night on, we on. would come to Jesus, Jesus. Come and on. we would get fed Hallelujah. by Jesus we even met at this Hallelujah. church yes, friends Lord. I want you to know that it's okay to tell your pastor that you're not you're not being fully fed. You need more. You need to go. You need him to go deeper. And maybe you'll find you'll find that 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 maybe he didn't know that he needed to go deeper. And God will pull him deeper once he knows. Or maybe if you find the right answer, then God will move you to another place, friends. I don't know who that's for, Jesus. but you've been coming to this ministry seeking God. In the dark, in the night, like Nicodemus, simply because you are not being fed at home. And I hear the Spirit of God saying, don't stop being fed here. I mean, I, I, I clearly hear him saying that, but what he's more so saying is, don't be afraid to let your pastor know that you need him to go deeper, that you need more. Friends, I want to encourage you. I want to push you and to prompt you. To seek Jesus, even in the place you are. See, God is not, see, see, 
Oh God, what God is saying to me right now is God did not call you to, 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 to be a Nicodemus and to get this salvation, to get this understanding of who God is, and then to take it home with you. God is not calling you to, to come in the night and receive more of him and then to keep that bit of him that you got to yourself. But what God is calling you to do, God is calling you into a place. God is calling you to take what you have gotten here, what you have received here, and begin to share it with others. God has called you to take that light, to take what you have learned from him, Nicodemus, and share it with the other Pharisees, to share it with the other people. Because what good does it profit you if you have all this light within you and you're holding your light within you but all around you is darkness what God is saying is this light of mine Hallelujah. I've got to let it shine yes. so friends I want you to just get down within your spirit get down within your flesh that no matter what happens if my pastor don't like it I'm gonna let my light shine if these people around me don't like it I'm gonna let my light shine because I'm tired of being the only goose surrounded by all these ducks. But I want some more goose, some more geese to be around me. And so, friends, I want you to know that you've got to let the light shine. What good is it if everything that you've learned here, everything that you've gotten here, all the, the, the fulfillment, all the stuff that you receive here, that you receive from Jesus, what good does it do? If you take that and just sit on it, it's similar to how Jesus said, you know, does a man take a light and hide it under a bushel? No, what he does is he takes it and places it on a stand okay. so that all who are in the house I'll are able to see. And so, friends, what I want you to know and understand is what you are receiving here. God is calling you to take that to those around you, calling you to share the gospel with other people. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, we bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, we praise you in this place, God. Mm, Jesus, Jesus, Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Glory Jesus. to your name, oh, God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Oh, you've been seeking him. You've been seeking him at night. My God. You've been coming to Jesus at night. And now you're in a position where you're so full. And you're just trying to find more little cups to hold more in and you you're full already but you're trying to get more little cups and hold more in more cups and pull more in but God is saying what he called you to do is to pour all of that out this is why he said my cup runneth over your cup is supposed to run over so that it would reach other people, so that it would reach masses, so that other people can have what you have. God says there's enough of him, there's enough of his blessings, there's enough of his spirit, enough of his anointing to go around. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Friends. You've been like Nicodemus. You've been seeking Jesus in the night. You've been chasing after him. You've been singing, Lord, I'm chasing after you. And you've been chasing. And what the Lord is saying is now that I have filled you, what will you do with that feeling? The feeling that God has placed within you. You're full now. What will you do with your fullness? Are you 
just going to hoard it and hold it for yourself? Or are you going to pour it out and let it flow? Will you let it flow? See friends, he called you to, he said, he said that out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. The living water is what he has placed within you. Once you have come to know him, once you have accepted him, now you have rivers of living water that he has opened up inside of you and it is to flow. But how can it flow if you're trying to cap it, keep it closed? Friends, will you let your rivers flow? Water that does not move is stagnant. Water that just sits begins to, to develop germs and bacteria and things and it's not good to drink, but, th you know, they tell you not to drink. If you were ever lost in the wilderness, they say don't drink water that is not moving, that is not flowing. But they say the water that is good to drink is the water that is flowing, that is moving. Friends, will you pour out your rivers of living water? You've been seeking Jesus in the night. Will you be the beacon of light in the darkness and take what you have learned in that dark experience in, in the darkness and share it with others friends I'm not talking about sharing the video I'm not sh even talking about liking the video anymore I'm simply talking about you taking what you have on the inside of you and sharing it with someone else it's not about Facebook likes and video likes and YouTube likes and all of that, but it's about you taking this testimony, this earthen vessel, all that you have within you, out into the world and sharing it with the world, sharing it with those around you. Last week we preached from the, the, the passage of scripture that said, you know, how can they hear without a preacher? And I know you say, well, I'm not a preacher, but God has called you. If you call yourself a Christian, then God has called you to live out a Christ-like life. He has called you to share the gospel. Friends, I want to encourage you to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't care if you share the videos, but share your gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, how he saved you, how he delivered you, how he brought you out, how he saved you. That's what this was all about. See, you're tired of church because, see, what you've done is, 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 see, you're tired of church because in church, you've been going to church and, 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 and it's just been kept within those four walls, kept within those parameters. But what God is saying is, will you unleash me? Will you let me out? Oh, that's what he was even talking about at the beginning of the worship experience, at the beginning of this service, is he wanted you to release your worship. And now you know how to let your worship out. So will you take what you have within you and unleash it? Let it out? Let it flow. Friends, I want to encourage you right now. You may find yourself where you say, Lord, I don't know how to unleash my worship. I don't know how to release my worship. I don't know how to, how to share the gospel with other people. I want you right now, just begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to share your fears with the Lord. Begin to share your feelings with the Lord. Begin to share with the Lord everything you're going through, everything you're dealing with, everything that you thought about as it relates to this situation. 
begin to just let your heart cry out unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Let your heart cry out. And see, some of you, you're, you're like Nicodemus in that you've never received Christ in your life. You don't know what it takes to be saved. Friends, I want you to know right now, all it takes is the same thing that Nicodemus did is for you to just come to Jesus. Won't you let your heart cry and just begin to tell the Lord how much you need him. Tell him what you desire of him. If you desire a relationship with the Lord, tell him. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. For your people, Father God, who have opened up their hearts now, oh God. And Father, even in this moment, Father God, as they are trying to make a decision, oh God, whether they will uh, let their light shine, oh God, or whether they're going to continue to hold it for themselves, oh God. Father, I pray right now, Father God, that you would give them strength, give them courage to stand, Father God. Give them strength and courage to move and do and go for you to let their light shine. Give them strength strength and courage to even speak to their pastor and tell their pastor, listen, I need more out of you. What you've been giving me is not enough. I leave this service Sunday after Sunday hungry for more. I need an encounter with the Lord. I need you to press deeper into the presence of God and give me all that God has given you. Friends, Woo. hallelujah. God, right now I pray that you would just give them courage, Father God. Give them strength. Give them boldness, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. That they may stand and proclaim, Father God, your word and your will, Father God. I praise you for them now, God. I bless you for them now, God. Father, it is in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus that I do pray, Father God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for you. I thank God for this message. And I pray that you have received something out of this message. I pray that you have received something specifically for you and your situation and what you're dealing with, what you're going through. I pray that God has spoken into your life. And friends, I know that it is rough. I know that it's hard. Because I've been in the situation where you are, where I was afraid to talk out to her, to, to speak to my pastor and tell them, listen, I need more. Because we had such a close relationship, I was afraid to tell him that I was coming to church and was not receiving much. Church would felt more like a job, just like I get up or, or I was getting up at the time and I would go to work and every day of work would be just the same old thing, just different situations, different positions, all of that. So had church become the same. I knew I was going to get up and go and do this and church had become work and you may find yourself what will begin to experience as your praise just as we've